Hello everyone. Good day to you all. Today is another day to hear the word of the Lord. We have been talking about the grace of God so far. On the first day we talked about Christ and the law, which is a message on grace. We talked about Abraham and grace. We talked about Isaac and grace. And we also talked about Jacob and grace. And today I would like to talk about <clears throat> walking in the grace of God. We have seen that even in the Old Testament, the fathers of faith walked by grace. They became blessed by grace. They were able to achieve what the Lord has said concerning their life through grace. So, you see, most of the time we think that when Christ came, that's when grace became available. Grace has always been available. <clears throat> grace has always been available. Okay. The only thing different is that in the Old Testament, Grace was applied in a different way. And in our New Testament, grace is also applied in a different way. Hallelujah. And in our New Testament, we operate through grace through Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who has given us grace or has become our grace. Hallelujah. So we are here to look from the scriptures, the state from the scripture, how to walk in the grace of God as believers. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We glorify you. We ask that, Father, O oh Lord, send your Holy Spirit among us, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit come and teach us and give us revelation, insight of your Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. So the grace of God. Hallelujah. How to walk in grace. <clears throat> My name is Pastor Kinsley. And as I always say, that the Lord will bless you through this message. The word of God carries the power and the ability within it to bless be anyone who receives it in faith. If you don't receive the word of God in faith, it will not benefit you. It will not be profitable to you. Are you with me? So I pray that the Lord will open your hearts, you open your understanding so that through faith you receive this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so how to walk in grace. How to walk in grace. Let us look at our first scripture in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 17. John, chapter 1, verse number 17. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So it is through Jesus Christ we have access to grace. Hallelujah. Now, there is also one scripture in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. I want us to read. It's a very important scripture I would like us to look at. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. It says, sorry, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I want us to take notice of something. The scriptures is telling us that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So the grace of God is not for only Christians. Are you with me? Any man, as long as the person falls in the category of a human being, that person can partake of the grace of God if he chooses to. Are you with me? It is not something that is imposed on people. People willingly choose it if they want to partake of the grace of God. Hallelujah. So the Bible is telling us that anyone can have access to the grace of God. And the first way to have access to the grace of God is to get born again. If you get born again, you have access to the grace of God. If you get born again, you receive this grace that has appeared to all men. So I will encourage you, if you are listening to me and you are not born again, I will encourage you that to this very moment, even before I continue, I want you to open your heart and begin to confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Messenger. Accept your sin and allow Christ to take away your sin. And I want to say this after me, even before we continue the message. Say in the name of Jesus, I thank you, O Lord, for sending your son to die for me. I believe and I know that I'm a sinner. But through your son, Jesus Christ, you are forgiven my sins. Therefore, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I receive him as the token. I receive him as the propitiation, the payment for my sin. That through him, O oh Lord, you have delivered me from my sins. I uh, thank you, O oh Father God, and I receive the Holy Spirit also into my heart to recreate me and make me your child and to make me joint heads with your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, then I want to tell you that you are born again. 
you have access to the grace of God. It's that easy. Yeah, it's very easy. It's that easy. Hallelujah. So if you are born again now, then I want you to know that the message is for you. You have received grace, Ole. When you get born again, you will receive the grace. Everyone who gets born again, everyone who receives Christ, whether it was yesterday, two years ago, ten years ago, five years ago, you received grace. Okay, the problem is that we don't know how to walk in this grace. So our life has become as though we don't have grace. Our life has become as if we don't know what grace is. Our life has become as if we are empty of grace. But it is not true. The moment everyone gets born again, he receives grace. Because the Bible tells us that grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So we get born again and receive Jesus Christ. Automatically we have received grace and even truth. Hallelujah. <clears throat> The problem is we don't know how to walk in grace. And that's what I want us to look at today. Hallelujah. Our first scripture we will look at is in the book of Romans. There are so many scriptures in my mind actually. So the books, the book of Romans, sorry, the book of Romans chapter 4. <clears throat> Romans chapter 4. There's a very beautiful scripture. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. It says, Therefore, it is of faith that it may be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all? <clears throat> Interesting scripture. He says, Therefore it also faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but those but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. He says, Therefore it is through faith, so that it can be by grace. So you see, um, the first key in walking in the grace of God is to have faith. Without faith, you cannot have access to God's grace. And he's saying that when through faith you receive this grace, then the promise will become sure in your life. Hallelujah. You see, it is through faith that we have access to grace. The grace is not something we see physical. It's not something we touch, okay? And when there was anything that we, we don't touch, we don't see physically, you can only have access to it through faith. Yeah. Faith is the connection or is the rope we use to catch that which is spiritual. Without faith, you cannot have access to any spiritual thing. So he said, therefore, it is by grace, it is by faith that you can have access to the grace so that the promise that God made to us through Abraham will become sure in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when we say faith, okay, what is it about? Faith is to accept the declaration of God's word concerning your life. That's, I want to put it in a simple way. Faith is to believe, it to be convinced, it's to trust in God's word concerning your life. That is, whatever God has said concerning your life, you trust and you believe that it is true. It doesn't matter what is happening around you physically. It doesn't matter what the physical things around you. It doesn't matter whether you are sick. It doesn't matter whether you are lacking a need today. It doesn't matter whether you are weak. It doesn't matter whatever is happening around you physically. If the Lord declares that by his stripes you are healed, by faith you accept that it's true. And you accept, you trust in that way. That even though I might have physical sickness in my body, but as the word has said by his stripes, I am healed. I believe and I trust in that word and I accept that word that I'm healed. That's faith. So your physical body will tell you one thing. The word of God is also telling one thing. By your faith, you accept the word of God. And as you accept the word of God and stand on the word of God and believe in the word of God, it will now overshadow. The physical symptoms that is happening in your body, it will overshadow the physical situation. Then your belief will make it manifest. Then it will come into physical manifestation that healing will enter into your body and the sickness will go. But most of the times we want to see the thing happen physically. We want the sickness to stop physically in our body before we believe that's not fit. 
So therefore, it is by faith that it might be by grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there is also one thing that I would like to talk about, which is in Philemon 6. Philemon is a book, very short book. It's only one chapter. Philemon 6. It's a, there's a very, an, it's an important key there that I want us to look at. Philemon 6. It says, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. I'm reading again. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ. There are so many important keys here. First of all, the Bible is telling us that every good thing which is in you in Christ, that is when you came into Christ, when you got born again, God deposited in you good things. Not bad. So if there is something bad happening in your life, it is not from God, it's from the devil. Because according to the scripture, good things have been deposited in us, in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, and he's telling us how to have access to it. That is the sharing of your faith. That is the communication of your faith. That is the ability to release that faith. He says, by the acknowledgement of every good thing. Acknowledge. That is to how should I put it? Acknowledge. That is to accept, believe that I have a good thing in me. You have to acknowledge it. That indeed I have a good thing. Yes, I may be, I may be lacking something today. I may have some needs today. But I acknowledge that through Jesus Christ, I am rich. That's faith. Hallelujah. Yet it, it looks as though physically, it looks as though things are not happening, things are not going well around me. Therefore, it looks as though I am under a curse. You know, when you look at my physical situations, when you, when I look at the things happening around me, how things are not falling in place, how things are becoming very bad, how things are becoming tough and difficult for me. Yet it looks as though I am under curse. But I rather acknowledge the good thing I have in me, which is I am free from care. Because the Bible says that God has made Jesus Christ to be our curse. So if God has made Jesus Christ to be our curse, then instead of curse we are blessed rather. Hallelujah. So what you do is that you acknowledge that you are blessed. You acknowledge that you carry the blessings of God. Yes, it doesn't matter physically. It doesn't matter that you look as though I am in a curse. But actually, I am blessed. Now when you say this, people will say, you are trying to be a hypocrite. You don't want to face what, what reality is. You don't want to face the truth. You just don't want to be. You are being. You are lying to yourself. You are being a hypocrite. You don't want to face the reality. You don't want to face the truth. It's a very important when when people talk to me about reality. Hallelujah. Reality is actually truth. Hallelujah. In the Bible or in the Scripture, when you see the word truth, especially in the New Testament, it's talking about reality. So when the Bible says spirit of truth, it's talking about spirit of reality. Now, what is reality? Reality, reality is what I'll say is um, the original thing, the original statement of a thing. Or the or, 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 uh, 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 reality, I'll put in this way, the Lord help me. Um, it's always difficult to explain it, pardon me. So um, the originality of a thing. Let me put it that way. Reality is the originality of a thing. So now, when we say reality, we are talking about the original thing, the truth of the matter. And the Bible tells us that Christ is truth. If Christ is truth, then it means that the word of God is truth because the word of God came from Jesus Christ. The word of God came from the Spirit of God. It came from Christ. Therefore, if Christ is truth, if Christ himself is the truth, then everything Christ says is the truth. Therefore, when I look at myself and I say I am healed by his stripes, though physically I have symptoms around me, what am I actually doing? I'm actually confessing the reality. I'm not being a hypocrite. Because reality is what God has said, not what I'm feeling. Reality is what God has said, what I see physically around me. Reality is the word of God. The Bible says that uh, when you read the John chapter 17, verse 17, it says, Thy word is truth. And I've already told you that truth means reality. So it means that thy word is reality. So you see, when people get confused and we say, no, confess what the Lord has said about you, they'll be like, no, 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 no. The thing is happening around me. Can't you see I'm going through stress? Can't you see I'm being depressed? Can't you see I'm going through the, I am depressed? No, you are not depressed. If you are born again, the Bible said that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, 
of love and sound mind. How can you have the spirit of sound mind and still be depressed? Because you are acknowledging rather the evil thing. Instead of you acknowledging the good thing you have in Christ, which is sound mind, you are rather acknowledging and confessing that you are stressed. You are confessing that you are depressed. Therefore, that is what you will receive, depression. But instead of acknowledging the good thing you have in Christ, which is sound mind, so that you begin to experience the sound mind, you rather acknowledge and confess the negative thing. Hallelujah. This is the work of faith. That's why the Bible says we do not walk by sight. <clears throat> we do not walk according to what our physical eyes see. We do not speak according to what our physical eyes see. We do not move according to what our physical eyes see. My physical eyes is telling me I am sick. My physical body is telling me I am not well. My physical eyes is telling me I am under a curse. My physical eyes is telling me I'm a poor person. But when I look at the reality, which is God's word, it tells me I am blessed in heavenly places. It tells me I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. It tells me I am seated above all principalities and powers. It tells me I am joint heads with Christ. It tells me that I am blessed above measure. It tells me that I carry abundance of life. And by that confession and by acknowledging of what God has said about you, by acknowledging of what you have in Christ, you bring into manifestation the blessings of God in your life. But we are rather acknowledge the evil things the, Lord, the devil is putting on us. We acknowledge the evil things the Lord is saying about, about us. Hallelujah. And this is the reason why our faith is not manifest. Hallelujah. Acknowledge every good thing you have in Christ. How do you know you have good thing you have in Christ? That's why you have to read about it. Through the scripture, especially the New Testament, through the scripture, you will get to know when Christ died for you, when you got born again, you get to know the things you have in Jesus Christ. You see, the problem is knowledge. We don't know what we have in Christ. And because we don't know what we have in Christ, we cannot acknowledge what we have in Christ. Because we don't know, know it, we cannot put our faith in it. So the, the, the problem of most Christians is knowledge. They don't study the Holy Scripture. You must study the Bible so that the Bible will tell you that by His stripes you are healed. The Bible is what will tell you that by His stripes you are healed. It's the Bible through the Bible. As you read the Bible, you realize that you are not under a curse. When you read the Bible, you study the Bible, you realize that you are blessed in the heavenly places. When you read the Bible, it will tell you that you are seated above demons. And when you read the Bible and you get to know this, that is when you begin to acknowledge and say to yourself, I am above demonic power. I am above satanic power. I am above witchcraft. You begin to confess and acknowledge those things. Then it will begin to manifest. But because we do not know and we do not read, therefore, nothing has happened. There's a very important scripture I want us to look at in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 5. It's a very interesting scripture. Verse 13. It says, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished, that is, hungry, and their multitude dried up with thirst. See, see, it said, My people have gone into captivity, which is slavery, because they don't have knowledge. Then he continue. The honorable men are hungry. They are honorable. God has made them. God has given them every good thing they have in Christ. Honorable. But they are hungry. They, they are hungry. They don't have anything to eat. They don't have They lack. Even though they are rich, they look as though people who lack because they don't have knowledge. And therefore, they are going to captivity. Some of us are captives of the devil. Captives of witchcraft activity because you don't know that you carry power about witchcraft. You don't know that the Bible says tread upon scorpions and serpents. The Bible tells us that Christ has, and God, uh, Jesus Christ has given us all power to tread upon scorpions and ser uh, serpents. And nothing by any means shall, shall hurt us. The Bible has said this, but because you don't know, therefore you are under captivity of scorpions and serpents, witchcraft and demonic manipulation. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. They enter into slavery because they don't know. And therefore the honorable man are famished, they are hungry, they are in lack, they are in need, not because they don't have, it's because they don't know. So they have it, but they don't know they have it. And because they don't know that they have it, they cannot acknowledge it. Beloved, study the word of God. One, acknowledge what you have in you. 
and a belief that does have faith in what God has said concerning life through the scripture. Do not look at what is happening around you. Let your belief and your faith and your mind and your acknowledgement be on what God has said about you. Do not acknowledge the evil things and confess the evil things that happen around you. Rather, acknowledge and confess what God has said concerning your life. That's how we walk in grace. That's how we release the blessings of God in us. Amen. This is my short message for you today. Next week, God willing, we are going to start a new series which I've titled Foundational of Christian Doctrine or the foundation of our Christian belief, if we put that way. The foundations or Christian beliefs, uh, foundation of our Christian beliefs, uh, things that we must know and have faith in as Christians. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. I believe this message has been a blessing to you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May this weekend be fruitful to you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you be blessed above measure. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you increase in prosperity. I pray above. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you walk in good health in the name of Jesus. I pray that may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ cause his blessing and mighty hand to rest upon you. Any demonic power, any Pharaoh fighting you, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let the angel of the Lord crush them for you in the name of Jesus. I pray that may the Lord shed forth his mercy upon you and may the favor of God locate you wherever you are. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you. Peace. Shalom. My name is Pastor Kinsley. I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor in Creator Shabu under the leadership of Apostle David Loshima. The church is at Dela, opposite Dela, which is in Dansuma, Dansuma, opposite Dela, the former Dela restaurant. Yeah, that's where my church is. And I would like that one of these days you come and visit us so you'll be blessed, okay, by my father, Apostle David Loshima. Amen. And I also want to tell you that we are, our page, Men of Eternity, is on Facebook. Like for me and men of eternity is on youtube subscribe for me men eternity is on spotify those of you know spotify and what spotify search for many men of eternity sorry and subscribe for me i'm on podbean men of eternity subscribe for me and i'm on google post men of eternity subscribe for me until we meet again the lord bless you and cause this faith to shine upon you peace shalom and be blessed amen <laughs>